Okay, this is the first lesson in how to play the queen versus rook endgame. My complete database is available on my website, queenversusrook.com, but I want to put some important points out here for people to learn from that are not well covered in the existing literature. Uh, the one that I want to talk about today is the harassment defense, and let's walk into it a little bit here. First off, look at the position on the screen. You'll notice that the defender is defending what's essentially a third rank defense, but it's on the fourth rank. So the defender is maintaining a cutoff along this rank. The white king can't advance. The, black, the white queen is holding the king back along this line. And in order to break this defense, the first thing that the attacker has to do is take away one of the two central squares that the black king is using. Without doing that, there's no way to defeat this defense. And it's surprising the number of rather strong players who don't know to do this. So the first step for the attacker is always to put the queen here, taking away one of the two central squares. If the attacker doesn't do this, then in response to almost anything, the defender simply moves the king between these two squares, here and here, and maintains opposition to the attacking king who will be here or here. So the first thing is to take away that square. Once the attacker has done that, the defender needs to know that the rook has to go on a square opposite to the color of the square that the attacking king is standing on. Right now the white king is standing on e5, a, a black square, and so the rook has to go onto a white square, like that. If the defender doesn't know to do this, then it's actually possible for the attacker to set up a Zugzwang and force the defender to give up the cutoff. But as long as the defender knows to do this, it's possible to maintain the cutoff. So white's natural attacking move is to take the opposition to the defending king. And we're now in a position to see the harassment defense. It's possible for the defender to play here. And in that case, the defender is choosing to play the position like a third rank defense. That's entirely valid. It works just fine. But that's in the section on third rank defenses. What we want to see here is a harassment defense, and this is it. Study the position for a moment, and you'll see what makes this so difficult for an unprepared attacker to break down. All of Black's pieces are operating with maximum efficiency. The king is standing in a position ready to step forward and body check the opposing king so that it can't defense. Meanwhile, the rook is hiding on the attacking king's own diagonal, and as a result, it can't be forked. And at the same time, it can give check from either the d8 or the a5 squares, following it up with several other checks. And if the king approaches the rook in order to break the series of checks, then the rook can run away to the center or to the other edge of the board and set up another harassment. So this is actually a very difficult defense to break down. In order to do it, the attacker needs to study this position and realize that in terms of making progress, the king is essentially helpless. Since it can be checked from two different directions, it can't contribute to the attack. That means that the queen is going to have to break this defense unaided. And in order to do that, the queen is going to have to do three things at once. She's going to have to control checking squares on both the A-file and the eighth rank, and at the same time, control this blockading square so that the black king can't just body check the white king and prevent all progress. A short study of the board will reveal that there's only one square that does all three of these things, and that's this one. That square controls this checking square and this checking square, meaning that the, the white king can advance this way. 
And at the same time, from this square, the queen controls the blockading square on the diagonal. So the entire plan for breaking the harassment defense lies in moving the queen to this square. Now there are two basic ways to do that. I'm going to show you the first one. I actually use the second one myself, but it's purely a matter of taste. They're both good. First, I want to show you how the defender will handle this position if the attacker doesn't understand. Let's have the queen check from here. The king naturally just walks forward into the blockading position. Queen checks. Stay near blockading. I want you to notice how the defending king stays in the opposite quadrant of the board from where the rook is hiding. Queen checks here. King goes there. Now, it's really important for the defender to notice now is not the time to maintain the blockade. This actually causes deep trouble because the queen is controlling this checking square. If black is foolish enough to take the opposition here, then white can simply step over this way and the check from the eighth rank isn't there. If black tries to check here, attack the rook, and suddenly you'll notice black has no way to get the rook back to the king. It's going to go lost to a fork in just a few moves. The only safe square on the fifth rank is here, but in response to that, there's a common tactic. White checks here, forcing the king onto the same diagonal with the rook absolutely fatal. If the king goes here, the rook is skewered. If the king goes here, the rook is forked. So instead of that, a good defender always follows the principle of staying on the black squares here and following the queen around wherever she chooses to go. So if the queen is somewhere over here, giving check, the king will tend to stay in this area, whereas if the queen is checking from over here, the king will tend to stay in this area. So the queen checks here, king follows her over, queen check, follow her over, queen check, move back, queen check, switch to the other side. Now, if white gets frustrated with this and goes here, all of a sudden the attacker loses a lot of ground. Check here. And notice that one of the black pieces is in the center of the board. If black is able to move the king here so that both pieces are in the center of the board, then we have one of those central positions that's also one of the three positions where an attacker is most likely to lose time. So white hurries to prevent this, get the king in contact with the rook, move the rook away from the king, queen checks, back here, attack the rook, hey, we're right back where we started. Once again, black is maintaining a third rank defense. White takes away the central square. Put the rook on a square of the opposite color to the king. And if the king moves here, we are right back where we began. So let's continue examining this position White checks here, black steps up, body check, check here, defender steps over here, check here, defender steps here. What I want you to notice is that from the point of view of the defender, it doesn't matter whether they're defending the first rank or the H file. Either way, it's a harassment defense and the same principles apply. Check here, step forward. 
check here, step back, check here, come over to the other side. It's still a harassment defense. One of the things that the defender never wants to do is step onto the diagonal of the attacking king. Once you do that, the jig's up. Now the defender simply goes there, setting up a discovered check and attacking the rook at the same time. And whatever you do, not only is the harassment defense over, but thanks to the discovered check, there's now a very good chance you're going to lose that rook to a fork. So let's step back here and let's look at the correct attacking technique. We've already identified the square that we want to maneuver the queen to. The first approach is to get the queen there with check. So rather than checking there, we're going to come over here, check, king steps aside, go here, check, maintain that contact, check here. Now we've maneuvered the queen to the ideal square. So at this point, you'll sometimes meet an attacker who doesn't understand the queen is optimally positioned, and the attacker will keep giving checks. If that happens, just sit back and smile and enjoy their frustration. Now, if black decides to respond to the ideal position of the queen by falling back, white just walks forward. There's no available rook check, and it can be a little tricky to reunite the black pieces at this point without losing the rook to a fork. So the defender doesn't want to do that. Instead, the natural thing to do to maintain the toughest opposition is to go here. This is the key position for breaking the harassment defense. This is what you want to mark in your memory. The attacker is trying to reach this position with the pieces on this rectangle. The attacker needs to remember that the queen is now perfectly positioned for breaking the harassment defense. So now it's the king that's the problem. But the king is still in no position to attack because there's still too much risk of being checked. Instead, notice that the black king has been hovering near the center of the board while the rook is over in a corner. If we could just airlift our king down to b2, there would suddenly be a very great danger of that rook going lost to a fork. So what the attacker does is run away with the king.